I'm going to throw out some numbers here. And I want y'all to tell me, who is this quarterback? All right, I'm going to throw some numbers out. 11 and 3. All right, so this is this is an actual season. Uh, this There's this quarterback. In recent years, I'll say last seven years, all right, this quarterback had these, this season. He went 11 and 3 as a starter. Clearly, he didn't start the season as a starter, but he started uh, 14 games. All right, played in 15 games, started 14 games in a 16 game season. All right, went 11 and 3 in those games, com- completed 67. Point six of his uh, passes. So that was his completion percentage, 67.6. Threw for 3,500 yards, 35.47 in those games. Not, I mean, you know, again, he didn't start the full season. I assume if you kind of put that over a full season, that's over 4,000 yards. Here we go, 22 touchdowns, seven picks. All right, so I'm going to say it again. This guy went 11-3 and as a starter. Completed 67.6% of his passes, threw for 3,500 yards, and again, this is in 14 starts, and 22 touchdowns, seven picks. Who is that quarterback? It is not. It is not Nick Mullins. It is not Baker Mayfield. He also won a playoff game. He also won a playoff game. All right. So it's going to be hard for y'all to guess who this is. Now, it's not Herbert. All right, now, again, Herbert, I don't think they ever went 11-3 and three with Herbert. All right, so now let's talk about this guy before that year and after that year, okay? Before that year, he went 4-5 and five as a starter and only completed 60% of his passes. After that season, or after the 11-3 season, he went 6-10. and 10. He started the entire season, went 6-10. and 10. Completed 62% of his passes, 18 touchdowns to 15 interceptions. Like, what happened? It's not Wentz. It's not Mariota. It's not Dak. It's Case Keenum. So in 2017, Case Keenum had an amazing season and played extremely well. Won a playoff game. Knocked off the Saints in the wild card round. Crazy game. Right? Like, that was the, the Minnesota Miracle. I think that's what they call it where he threw the touchdown to Diggs, and the guy missed, and Diggs ran in through his helmet. That's like an epic picture as well. And I, and, I, and I say that because I start to, let's dive into some of the things that Steve Young said. All right, and then we're going to circle back around to this. Steve Young starts talking about Brock Purdy. And he says, Brock Purdy is, is an incredible, unique human being. And he says, I'm just not going to limit him. I'm not going to limit him. Just let him let him loose. Let him cook. Those are his words. All right. Let, let Brock Purdy cook. And he talks about all the things that he likes about him. Right. You know, he's talking about the, the processing and, uh, you know, all the, you know, he talks about all that. Right. And I'm listening. And I see on Twitter this conversation pops up. And somebody talks about, oh, yeah, well, Steve Young is not going to limit him, blah, blah. You don't need the big arm. You don't need this. You don't need that. He has the force. That's what Steve Young said. Shout out to David, David Yang in the chat. He said, yeah, he, he, got the, he got the force, right? And he compared it to, like, the Star Wars thing where it's kind of like this force. He's like, it's, it's so thick, like the force and, and just what, what he is. And I'm like, you know what, man, I hope, I hope Brock Purdy is that. I hope Brock Purdy is that. And I got to thinking because somebody was like, well, Steve Young's not going to limit him. I'm like, you know what? Just because Steve Young says he's not going to limit him. And you know, I stopped kind of giving takes on Twitter because it gets a little wild, right? But I'm like, just because Steve Young says he's not going to limit him, that doesn't mean that Brock Purdy doesn't have limitations. He does have physical limitations. My response was, even with physical limitations, you can work around those things, right? Like. Like, I use an example with Richard Sherman. Richard Sherman was a uh, 6'3 corner, long, athletic, played receiver, went to, went to the cornerback position, was drafted fifth round because he didn't run as fast, right? Four, five, seven, and that is a limitation, like just not being fast at the cornerback position. But if you learn how to play around that, right? I was more of a four, five, five, four, five, seven type guy as well. I didn't truly learn how to play around that at the highest level, 
right? And some of it has to do with scheme. I think Richard Sherman fell into the right scheme that uh, for him. I think the way he played, the way they used his strengths, I think they did an exceptional job of that. And next thing you know, Richard Sherman is a Hall of Fame player, right? I assume that he should be first ballot. I don't know what y'all think, but I think I think he should be first ballot. But you can have these quote unquote physical limitations in the sense of like something that's not like this elite trait, but still play very well. Now, the the difference. And this is why I brought Case Keenum in. And obviously, we'll talk about uh, Brock Purdy as well. Guys that don't have physical, these elite physical traits, right? And they have to count on something else for it to, like, be good. A lot of times, you can play well, but even then, it's like they're your best can't touch the best of somebody that's more physically gifted and that and that's just kind of like that's being realistic right like cam newton dude cam newton cam newton what is he a complete a, a career 58 percent completion percentage guy right like not the most accurate i don't think anybody in here would be like man cam newton was hella accurate no he wasn't <laughs> he wasn't but cam newton he just Somehow, some way, in a season, or even over a stretch of a few years, he can be one of the best players in the NFL while not being accurate. How? It's because, bro, I am so physically gifted that even though I'm not elite at this accuracy, or maybe even some of the things that Steve Young was talking about, processing all that, it doesn't matter because I'm hella fucking talented, <laughs> right? Like, it don't, it don't matter. So in this year, I can be league MVP and lead the Carolina Panthers to a 15-1 and record. And in this year, I can get us a first-round bye. And, and even though we lose to the 49ers. And in this year, I can do this. And he going to the playoffs because he just has elite talent. And I look at the Philadelphia Eagles. I don't think that uh, Jalen Hurts is this elite passer. Now, he can make some elite throws. But I don't think he's like this elite passer of the football but situation matters and some of the things that you can rely on even when you don't have your fastball can get you by so we saw him man if the throwing wasn't work man the running was gonna work i'm gonna run i'm gonna do all these things and next thing you know mvp caliber season because i can rely on this right so when i look at brock purdy and just watching him Right. And somebody was like, Crock, what do you think? Why do you think he was like a 73 overall? Why do you think Brock Purdy is a 73 overall on Madden? That's disrespectful. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, it's tough because he doesn't have elite physical traits. Now, what does he do have? He might be an elite processor, right? Uh, you know, being able to throw with timing and rhythm and be consistently accurate, right? He can do all those things. And if he can continue to do those things, he can be really good. I always look at, you know, when we start trying to crown a guy as a franchise quarterback, you know, when he doesn't have his fastball, what can he turn to? What does it look like, right? Like, can he create the explosive plays? And maybe he can. I think those are things I want to continue to see him do this year. But listening to Steve Young, and Steve Young's a hell of a lot smarter than me. Like On the football field, off the football field, he's like this super mega mind type guy. So he knows what he's talking about. When he sees something, I believe him. But I don't watch enough football to where I'm like, you know what, Steve? You're all in. I, I might, I, I, I'm, I'm inching towards that, but I'm not going to be as all in as you. Because I've seen where these guys, like Case Keenum and some of those guys, have these good years. And, you know, and it's just like, okay, that was a really good year. Saw it. Can't do it again. It's like, damn, Case Keenum just couldn't do it again. He just couldn't do it. Now, maybe it could be a situation. Maybe that Minnesota Vikings game was tailored to – the you know like uh, uh, tailored to to where Keenum could be the best version of him, and then once he left the Vikings and went to Denver, and then went to all these, and he's like, and he was not very good, and he's like, oh yeah, he is a backup, you know, uh, maybe that's what it was. But for whatever, in this system right now, I think Brock Purdy plays extremely well, and he does a really good job. And I see Axel say, hey, didn't Peacock say he has elite short area speed? I think he has very good short area quickness. I think he has very good short area quickness. 
And I think that helps. I think that definitely helps. Uh, as far as the playmaking a- aspect of it. If he didn't have it, we would probably look at him a lot like Nick Mullins. But he does have it, so he's not Nick Mullins. He's better than Nick Mullins. All right. Now we got uh, Texas Niner. He says, I hear you, Croc. Except expectations of what we got from Purdy last season could hit this season, but I don't think so. Hey, I think he, he could. I think that Brock Purdy could very well repeat everything he did last year and play very well. I think he could do it. I just don't know for certain. I'm just not as all in as young. Again, Steve Young knows a lot more than me. But I just have to see it again because I know when guys, when you don't have that one thing, I can consistently rely on. I have to rely on the mind. Like I have to rely on the uh, the processing and and all that. And then the guy, that is just harder. And then the guys that do master that at the highest level, then they are really good. And now we're talking about Drew Brees category or Tom Brady and 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 May Brock has some of that right where he's just like, I refuse to lose. I'm going to be really good. I'm going to be consistent at this. And if he could do that, then we are talking about a Drew Brees or Tom Brady or something like that, right? But if it's not to that extent, then what does it look like? And that's the hard part, right? Like if it's not, if it's not too, if he's not from the consistency standpoint, and I'm asking this, I'm asking y'all, all right? If it's not to the point of Drew Brees and, and some of these guys, what what does it what does a step down look like? I think some people would off the top of your head would be like, well, Kirk Cousins, uh, Jimmy Garoppolo, Carr, you know, I think kind of in that mold where Cousins probably out of those guys, just the most consistent, like the most consistent out of all those guys, doesn't get hurt, plays a lot of games, um, you know, develop the, the big ball. I think Kurt's arm is better than, than Brock Purdy. I think Kirk is underrated with his speed straight line, even though Brock Purdy definitely got him in the short area quickness. All right. Uh, Brock's worst is that is that's BS. Cause you weren't saying that when Brock Purdy was, I mean, uh, when Nick Mullins was throwing for against goddamn New York Jets and New York Giants, 300 and something yards and multiple touchdowns and Mullins, the disrespect towards Mullins, he was on the terrible, like the team wasn't set up the same. Now, this isn't me uh, pinning Mullins against Brock. I don't want to come off as that. Like, at the end of the day, whatever. They are who they are. But I feel like Mullins, when we start talking about, like, kind of his situation, I think Mullins is probably a lot closer to Brock than people want to admit. The biggest difference to me is Brock got a little bit more playmaking ability in him. Like he's like, hey, let me uh, start moving around and make some plays where eh, Mullen's not really going to give you that. You know what I'm saying? He ain't going to give you that. I think that was a difference. And that's a big difference. That's a big difference. But Mullen's, in the sense of like, if you were to say, man, why is Nick Mullen's good? What makes Nick Mullen's an NFL quarterback, right? I would, I would say that a lot of the things that you would list off would be pretty much identical to Brock Purdy, except for that one thing, which is short area quickness, which makes Brock more of a playmaker. And that's a, that's a compliment. That's a compliment to Brock. I don't want anybody to think like, oh, you're just talking bad about Brock. Nah, man. Nah. But as far as like just them playing the quarterback positions and a lot of things that you're going to point to first as to why, uh, you know, Nick Mullins or Brock, like who's better, whatever, like, it's very similar. It's very similar. I think Brock, uh, uh, Nick Mullins processed well. Student of the game. No nonsense type guy. I think he was pretty accurate. Didn't have the biggest arm, right? Like it's, a lot of it's the same stuff. That's what led him to throw for the third most yards over the first 16 starts in NFL history. He, he, Mullins not a bum from that standpoint. I think his biggest downfall is that Hey, he didn't have George Kittle for a lot of the season. He didn't have Debo Samuel for a lot of the season. He didn't have 
you know, the number one defense for a lot of the season. Nick Bosa got hurt. Yeah, Solomon Thomas got hurt. It's like, bro, who? Okay, I got to throw the ball to Brandon Ayuk. Okay, I'm going to throw the ball to Brandon Ayuk. Okay, I got to throw it to Kendrick Bourne. Okay, I'm going to throw it to Kendrick Bourne. Okay, I got to do this for a whole season. Damn, that's kind of tough. Damn, I got no one defense. Damn, it's kind of tough. That's tough. Ultimately, again, and this is going back to Steve Young. I understand why Steve Young is all in on Brock. I personally can't wait to see this season. And I hope that Steve Young is right. Now, obviously, there is that uh, dark cloud looming. I think that's Trey Lance. 